How do you turn examples into a software design? In a previous learning hour, we discussed the way with test-driven development, we drive the development using tests and design by usage first. And in this session, we're going to follow on from that and take up similar topics in a little more detail. So I recommend you watch Usage First Design in TDD first, because we will talk more about that, but also more about incremental development. Hi, I'm Emily Bates. I'm a software developer and creator of Saman Coaching. This is a guided learning hour, and it's designed to help developers and technical coaches to get going with team training sessions. So based on this video, you can lead this session on my behalf with your team. There are also some supporting materials. There's a coding exercise available on GitHub and an activity board, and you can get hold of a copy of the one I'm using from my Patreon. Do check that out. And of course, if you like this content, please subscribe to my channel and like this video. If you haven't seen one of these guided learning hours before, I do recommend another video, Guided Learning Hour How To, that'll explain more. And also watch to the end of this video where you've got the session briefing, which explains more about how to do this. I'm about to begin the part of the video that you can show your team. It's marked on the video with the chapter, gather your team, so you can start from there when you're ready. Hi, I'm Emily Bache. Welcome to this guided learning hour. It's a follow on session from the previous one on usage first design in TDD. We're using this shared online whiteboard that everyone should have access to. How do you design a new class? I've got some ideas here on sticky notes that could describe a way that you might design a new class and a set of pretty markers that appeal to me. So pick the one that you like best and use that to mark the notes that describe how you design classes. And if there's more than one, just make a copy and put it by as many of these as apply. And if you think, well, but I usually do something else, write an additional note and put your marker next to that one too. Just spend a few minutes and see if your team designs classes in the same way or different ways. I don't know what you've come up with, but perhaps your board looks a bit like this now. Different people have different ways of doing things, and you've probably thought of things that I didn't have on my list either. But one of the things I do have on the list, I hope at least some of you might have considered for when you're designing a new class, is the approach we looked at in the last guided learning hour, usage first. Design it by how you use it in a test, or think about how you use it in other classes and work from there where it's being used. So this is something, as I said, that we discussed in the previous guided learning hour, where I introduced this idea of usage first design, where you design the new classes and methods by how they'll be used primarily before you write the implementation. And I said that people also call this consume first or example guided design. And since the last session, somebody also pointed out it's basically the same as outside in development. So there's different names for this because a lot of people do this. And also in the previous session, we looked at an example. We looked at some usage first design, this shopping basket carter, and I showed you a way to develop this with a, a shopping basket class and basket item classes and, and so on. And you practiced implementing that. Today, we're going to kind of follow on from that with the same code carter, but with different designs. So I've included the, the text of the code carter here again. So in case you um, have forgotten what it, the actual requirements were, but it's basically uh, a shopping basket contains items. They have prices and quantities. Work at how much the shopping basket is going to cost and apply discounts if they qualify. So if I just zoom out a bit here. So I've got several design proposals for you to evaluate. So it's a bit similar to the exercise we did last time. There are three design proposals. And for each one, you can see the test case uh, that for the same um, functionality with the 5% discount and a pile of notes of that could describe char design characteristics that this code may or may not have. So you need to decide if you're going to, does it have this? Does it not have this? Or is it a bit hard to tell? So you leave it on the line. So split into smaller groups to review this code and decide what design characteristics you think each of these three samples, test cases, would imply. Of 
course, I don't know how you've evaluated these designs, but I hope you've had a chance to look at the sample solutions that I've put where I evaluated these designs and moved the notes around. Perhaps you don't agree. That's fine. I mean, one of the points is that you could evaluate the design just from the test case. But the other thing was, I just wanted to point out that some of these designs actually don't specify all that much. Like this one. I mean, you're using this JSON to construct a basket, which you have no idea what type that is, actually. You just know it's got two methods and you don't really know how it's represented anything inside. So this this design, for example, gives you a lot of flexibility when you're developing the, the actual class to uh, to change a lot of things. So that's one interesting aspect here. Now, last time we started from one of these examples, but then we didn't design from that. We went back to a much simpler example and developed incrementally. And that is something I recommend. Don't start with a complex example. Start with the simplest one you can think of. Build up your design gradually, example by example. And we looked at a demo of that last time. Uh, and I'm going to do another demo in just a moment showing how to do this with a different target design. In this demo, I'm going to do the shopping basket carter again in C Sharp but this time with a different target design. You may be using a different programming language and have a different target design in mind, perhaps, but test-driven development is fundamentally the same in every programming language. The details of the design can differ, but I want you to try and focus on the way I'm turning examples into test cases and I'm developing incrementally. Here is the code for example B that you reviewed earlier, and that's my target design for this demo. Um, and the basket analysis class that mentioned here, I've just got empty stubs for the methods that just are not implemented exception. And I've got my test list there, and I can run my test and see that it's currently disabled because I've got a way to go before I get to that design. I'm going to start over and implement it piece by piece incrementally, starting with the empty basket. So this test needs a name. Um, empty basket contains nothing. And again, I can use my target design here to help me to build up this test quickly. So I just need to construct a basket and uh, assert that whatever item I ask for, it says no, it's uh, nothing, none of that. And of course, there I triggered my not implemented exception, so I can go straight to the place I need to fix. And I can return a basket. Um, let's just return zero. Um, I'm trying to build my implementation incrementally here. So let's just start with the simplest thing that could work there. That lets me make a little bit of progress, cross something off my list and go to a more interesting test case to help me to build the next piece of functionality. So we're going to have a test here for one item in the basket, item A. Um, so the scenario needs a name, one item. Yeah, yeah, that seems like a reasonable enough name. Um, I might need to change it later if I uh, have other tests that also have just one item. Um, the test name should be unique, of course, and describe something about the scenario. So I might need to revisit that later. But for the moment, let's just ensure that this test actually tests what I need it to test. So. I'll check that I've got one item A in my basket at the end. And this is a mistake I often see people making actually when they, if you, especially if you've copied another test case, that you forget to update the assert and then it doesn't pass when you expect it to pass. So before you get as far as running a test, do just check that it's asserting the right thing. Okay, and it fails, great. Uh, so now I actually have to fix that uh, return zero that I had earlier. Um, so uh, I probably need to actually look at the basket now. Um, the basket contains values and I can count them. Uh, that seems reasonable. Yep, and that seems to work. Okay, uh, it's not enough to, to work in general, so I clearly need another uh, test case that's going to force me to generalize this. So let's have another a test case for this time when I've got two A items in the basket. So again, I can copy the previous test um, this scenario can be called two items for the moment until I have any more scenarios with two items. And uh, let's just make sure that I'm asserting the right thing here. Cool. So that test is failing, indicating I really need to go and fix my implementation. 
But I'm going to leave the rest of this for you to work out for yourselves. I think you can come up with an implementation that will make this test pass. Just try and work incrementally, one test at a time. Don't do more than you need. So now it's your turn. I want you to do the same. I want you to go and develop uh, a different implementation with the same test list. And you can pick um, the one I showed in the demo or, or the other designs that we already looked at today. Or you could come up with your completely new idea of your own of how to design this class. Um, if you do that, uh, be sure to write the, the kind of the, the target design test case first and then make sure it compiles but doesn't run while you go back and develop incrementally from the empty basket test and the one item test and, and so on until you eventually get that last working process test to, to pass. So work in pairs and uh, see if you can be successful with this. So now, just at the end of the session, I'd like you to stop coding and do some thinking and evaluation. In your pairs, you could discuss together, is this approach of incremental design something that you could do in your production code? What would it take before that would be possible? And do you think it would be a good idea? Have a short discussion. I hope this session has given you and your team some new insights into test-driven development and how it lets you develop incrementally. So the next time you're designing some new code, see if you can first work from the place the new code is used before you write the implementation. And then when you build the implementation, do that piece by piece incrementally. Happy coding. This is the session briefing intended for the developer or coach who's going to host the guided learning hour. My hope is that with a little help from me, leading these sessions is something most developers can do alongside your normal job. And if you haven't already done the previous session that I refer to, I do recommend you do that one first and then come back and do this one. Doing these learning hours together with your team could be exactly what you need so you can do more test-driven development and more incremental development in your production code. In this guided learning hour, there are four points where I ask you to pause the video and lead activities with your team. There is a connect, a concept code review, some concrete practice and conclusions. And it shows here on the screen roughly how long each activity is supposed to take. Since part of your job is to keep track and prompt people when it's time to move on to the next part. The Connect activity is about how people design classes. And this is something that I expect people to have done as part of their job and that they would have different ways of doing that. And different people might have different preferences. So it's important to just make sure they know the mechanics of how they're going to vote for the different things that they, they might actually find that they do or how they should create a note for the, the thing that they do that I didn't have on my list. Um, this is not an opportunity for a big discussion. It's, it's really just to get everyone to start thinking about, you know, how do I design code? And once the, the markers have stopped moving or the, the notes have stopped being written on or, or the time is up, just, yeah, it's, there's not a, a chance for a big discussion here. You don't have to do anything. You just have to say, great, we all have different ways of doing this. Designing is important and put the video back on. The second activity here is very similar to the one we did in the previous session, except instead of just one code sample to review, they've now got three. So you will need to prepare the board with the code samples and the notes describing the design characteristics. Or of course, you can get a copy of my board, hopefully that might save you some time. The thing to do here is to split people up into pairs and get them to do this exercise. and. I'd suggest you don't wait until everyone's finished to reveal my sample solutions. Reveal them as soon as you can see the notes have stopped moving on any of the pairs, uh, different boards. And then they should go and actually have a look at that themselves and, and have a little discussion in their pairs about whether they agree with my design uh, 
characteristics, decisions, or whether they think something else. So instead of having a whole group discussion about this in the end, like you might have done in the previous session, just let people talk about it in their pairs. And not everyone might get to that part, but that's actually fine. Again, the main point of this is just that you can evaluate a design without being able to see the implementation and uh, get people to have a go at doing that and read the code. I mean, that's what, just giving people time to read the code is partly the point here. The coding exercise is also pretty similar to the one we did in the previous session. My intention is to get you to practice these skills again and to doing that more than once with a slightly different design in mind is going to help you to understand the, the principles that I'm trying to get across. I'm giving you this test list to make it easier to do incremental development, that you know what should be in each step. And hopefully people will find that helpful. Now, if you've got some ambitious people in your group, perhaps they finished really quickly last time, um, encourage them that they should perhaps come up with their own target design and not use one of the three that I've suggested. They can use their imagination and come up with a better design than I have um, and start by writing that first test, marking it work in process, and then going back and using the test list. So hopefully people finishing earlier will be less of a problem uh, for this exercise. Then there's the conclusions. And just like in the last session, we've practiced two aspects of test-driven development today, the usage first and the incremental development. And today, the conclusions is more about that second one, the incremental development. And it's a, how can we use this conclusion? So I want people to kind of discuss in their pairs, uh, is this something that we could do? What, what would be stopping me from designing my production code like this with tests incrementally? And uh, perhaps that's ambitious for them to start doing straight away, but I think it's good to get them to start thinking about, well, what would it take for that to happen? Great, I hope you feel equipped now. Go and lead this session with your team. Happy coding. <laughs>